Let's get to the life advice part of this. But like, hey, do you guys do life advice anymore? Or you just recap shit. Now we do it. All right. Um, moving in with a girlfriend. Six foot, 150. I say wiry strong. Uh, they say string bean or gumby. People say I play <laughs> like KD during pickup hoops, though. So now I can lie to myself and say that's why I don't need to bulk up. You're Didn't six we have one a guy compare himself to Jokic. Six last one playing week like KD. Oh my god. We had a we had a guy compare himself to Jokic a few weeks like last week, and a guy compare himself to KD this week. This is like lower your <laughs> lower your comparisons, guys. <laughs> I mean, guys won't even say Bobby Portis. <laughs> yeah, I love Bobby Portis. That'd be a great comp. Yeah, but it's the the, I'm the, the Bobby Portis of the Y. <laughs> the number of guys that think they play like Jokic is unbelievable. It's like why? Because you don't run super fast. Because <laughs> you can't <laughs> jump. Yeah, you're a little <laughs> overweight. <laughs> You don't have ar- wait. You do or you don't have arguably the best vision we've ever seen. It's the best vision be the for mo- a big man. What would be the most ridiculous one? Like I'm, I'm the Giannis of my why. <laughs> That's pretty ridiculous. <laughs> I used to tell people I played like KG, and they were like, "What are you talking about? You don't even dunk." <laughs> and I was like, "No, it's just that I can whatever. Like if I have to play center or point guard, I got it. High release point, you know? Yeah." No, it wasn't even about that. It was more about like just the tools out of the toolbox. Like, which ones do you need today? Like, oh, you need me to power it forward? No problem. You need me to set screens and pop? No problem. Although, I, would, you know, after a while, if I didn't get any shots up and I was setting screens for younger guys, I would scream. Like, hey, I'm not here to fucking screen all day, guys. <laughs> Who is your comp be currently? Ryan Rosillo, pick up <laughs> basketball know. Manhattan Beach. <laughs> uh, I don't know. <laughs> Paul Reed. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. <laughs> wish I, I wish I had that much energy. Um, That's trying to think maybe sam gash <laughs> fullback <laughs> okay back to our guy here i'm 27 <laughs> back to our 6-1 kd i'm 27 and been dating my girlfriend who's 25 for about a year and a half she does well at work makes more money than i do she just bought a fairly nice house in uh i guess we'll say the city he we'll just say the city i'm not going to get to the specific neighborhood but it's a good part in chicago uh that i will be moving into in july uh, he says parentheses after July, my queen. What does that mean? Like just his queen bed, his queen mattress? Uh, maybe know. he's saying it because she's like the breadwinner and is taking him in. So he's calling her my queen. I don't know. That's what I thought the first time I looked at this. I'm not sure. It's irrelevant. Should just keep moving on. Maybe he's a funny guy. That. Maybe he's hilarious. He says yeah. KD and my queen and he's funny. <laughs> he's the funniest KD at 6'1 <laughs> we've ever met. All right. I do just fine on my own, could easily continue renting or possibly buying a smaller place for myself. We're at the stage in our relationship where we want to live together. Her house has plenty of room for the both of us, so the time seems right to move in. My lease is up. I will be paying her monthly with half going to things like taxes, HOA, um, and the other half towards her mortgage so I can build equity in the home with her. She says, ideally, we don't break up, and then it doesn't really matter what's hers is mine and vice versa. Let's read that sentence again. The other half towards her mortgage so I can build equity in the home with her. She says, ideally, we don't break up and that it really doesn't matter because what's hers is mine and vice versa. However, we do break up and she says she would pay me back for the amount that I've invested towards the actual home during the time I've lived with her. This sounds like a pretty sweet setup to me. Almost too good to be true. Is there any chance this blows up in my face? Yes, there definitely is. Uh, (laughs) And he says, if so, how? All right. Um. He also said, I'm trying to make myself more useful around the place than the average tent by helping fix things and buying her some furniture. Not sure if that makes much of a difference, though. Okay, look, uh, this is not new. It happens all the time. Here's what I would say. It sounds like a pretty sweet deal, right? Um, this, You guys are in love with each other, though, and you're negotiating, all right? When you fucking hate each other, the negotiations don't go as smooth, all right? And so there's a lot of times when people are breaking up. It's like, well, you said this. Yeah, I did. I said that when I liked you. And now I don't. And now I don't want to say those things anymore. And I feel differently. So I wouldn't buy your own house because of the concern. (laughs) Because people do break up. Happens all the time. Going to happen again. You just have to prepare yourself for what that could be. And maybe it is a clean break. We don't need emails from people sending in being like, I actually broke up and I got all my mortgage back, Ryan. You guys are it. No, we don't need that. (laughs) We don't need that. I'm aware that that option (laughs) has happened. Good for you, guy. Yeah. Uh, you know, actually. <laughs> okay. Everybody just move in together and start just having verbal agreements on how the mortgage payback is going to work. Once you're found out that you're, you've been making out with a cocktail waitress, at the lodge for an entire summer. All right. The woods. Let, let me know how your mortgage reimbursement plan <laughs> goes then. 
Because when people break up, they do really petty shit, especially when we're talking about possessions. All right. I know somebody that asked for a dog back after two years because they got mad that the other person that had dumped them had upgraded. And then the guy realized, I'm still so pissed about this. I want my dog back. And the person I knew was like, all right, fine. You like it. So you could put stuff in writing. You could do some of that stuff. Um, you could even do something weird, I guess, where you could have it be sort of a neutral account. Were you paying to that? But then it's like, okay, so what? What? <laughs> it'd be really weird too, because if that account grew as it should, you'd be like, I'm not really that into her, and if I cash out right now, I get like six grand. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like anybody with this, go for it, but just be prepared that it's not that, that right now. It sounds like a great idea because you like each other so much, and when you're arguing over throw pillows. And there's resentment because there will be resentment on, from one side in a breakup almost all the time. Um, that's where a lot of these these transactions or these financial planning deals, uh, that's where they go south. Yeah, I was going to say the smoothest thing for you, the, the way that like you'll be happiest with the way you're treated, I think, in, in your relationship like now is the smoother you roll into this. If you're like, yeah, sounds good. That's great. Love you. We're not going to break up. Let's do this. It's fine. And I think... But then you you know you do leave yourself open to you know whatever if you really think you're gonna get any sort of mortgage stuff back. So I think that the way that you be happiest in your relationship is probably by just going with the flow. And I think the more you ramp up trying to make some guarantees about you know some paperwork or whatever, um, maybe maybe the more strange the feeling it'll be between the two of you. At least at least when you're first putting it on the table. And not to bring it back to Judge Judy, but when you got nothing in writing, she's like goodbye, sir, goodbye. So. Just, I mean, I know, I know you probably won't be going to, on Judge Judy if you're trying to recoup this thing, but I think most judges are going to be like, well, what do you have to show me? You're like, well, she said, and he's like, okay, goodbye. So, I mean, it, it seems like you're not going to get any guarantees unless you, unless you maybe write something down. But if you do write something down, it might be a little weird for your relationship. So, I don't know. I think maybe just deal with the thing. And how are all these 20 somethings buying houses? What the hell is that? She said he's 20. He said he's 27 and she's 25. She just bought a house. Give me a break. In Chicago? He said, that? He's, he said she does pretty well, but you're right. The part of town, like she had to be doing, maybe it was debt forgiveness. Who knows? Just oh, kidding. God. Um, do you guys have anything you've ever argued over possession, like possessional breakup? No. Up until this point, I've only lost clothes. I lost some CDs back in the day that I was really bummed about. Um, never got them back. I asked a couple times, but nothing like super major. Yeah, I loaned money for to get an iPhone fixed, and we broke up like a month later. She was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> it's like, all right, well, this hurts. This hurts real bad. Because I need to get my iPhone fixed, but I really liked you. <laughs> so, so, whatever. Tough days. Same one who stole my jackets. You're going to lose clothes if you break up in any relationship. That's just, that's a given. I don't even think. Guys are going to lose clothes. Not yeah, well, many guys okay. will be like, yeah. oh, I snagged a sweet mid <laughs> I Love this, this glass. Crop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's fucking sickest scarf ever. She's never gonna. She's gonna be so pissed. Um, I've never. Yeah, I've never met any any guys that were like, man, when we broke up, it sucked. But unless you're dating I Harry Styles, you know, everything's yeah. fair, fair game. <laughs> What's going on with Harry? I think he's got a new album coming out soon. Yeah, pretty excited think, about. Is it. that what he was talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> All right, um, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> <laughs> moving on. Uh, we had a good one here. I think it was good. Maybe a C plus B. Oh yeah, here it is. Okay. Controversial major league, major league baseball pitcher. We would have figured that one out because it just said pro baseball player, but I, I didn't read it that way. All right. 5'10", 195, can bench maybe a hundred pounds. I'm not the athletic 195, more of a loser 195. Oh, wow. But super self-confident. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> I'm an operation manager of a well-known Hotel brand. We have an independent league baseball team in town. Um, one of the players is the son of a well-known pitcher. Uh, let me just say he's a controversial pitcher around the steroid era. So the player uh, called and is coming to stay with us. So once hearing it and knowing who he is, I scheduled myself to work that day, all day. I did my due diligence and asked uh, the son if his dad would be cool if he could sign a ball for me. He said, of course. 
I was a huge fan of his uh, growing up. He pitched for my favorite team. I remember one performance when I was young that I watched with my dad. It was absolutely insane. Remembering memories like that with my dad, who's now not with us, got me even more excited to the chance to meet him. The question is, how do I go upon asking for him, uh, asking him for a signed ball? I know he gets asked all the time, probably. Knowing he's coming in, do I ask when he checks in, or do I wait until he's eating breakfast or just walking by? He will be with us the whole week. Uh, I think the fan in me will go batshit crazy. I know it can be a very unprofessional thing to do when I'm checking him into the hotel, but growing up, knowing this guy is one of the greats, but I know I shit my pants when he comes in because he is a part of my early childhood baseball memories. I will remember forever until my kids one day. Follow-ups will happen after this. Um, after this encounter happens, you can say my name. I don't give a shit about that, uh, but I'll keep the player's name undisclosed. All right. Uh, I can figure out exactly who this player is. So I've met this player. It's not that hard to figure this one out. Um, and I would tell you he's actually very, very nice in these settings. So you have that working for you, okay? I was with this player at an event, and people were heckling the shit out of him. And he was one of the best I've ever seen at dealing with people heckling him. He's like, yeah, man, what's up? So again, if you've ever heard me tell that story where I'm leaving out the name this time because of the email, but again, this isn't this isn't super hard to figure out. Uh, I would not ask on check-in, all right? And you're admitting, too, like the hotel would hate this, okay? I think I have one friend who had a buddy. No, no, this is how it worked. I have a friend. He's still a friend. A younger brother who was working for a major hotel chain and a huge band. I think Pink Floyd checked into the hotel and he immediately went to Facebook, was like, holy shit, Pink Floyd just checked into dot, dot, dot. Like, this is amazing. Smooth. And, and the work was like, <laughs> hey, dude, in the future, can you not broadcast over Facebook when we have these kinds of people checking in to the hotel? Like, part of it is that, you know, we'll just give it away, right? So I would not ask on check-in because then other coworkers are going to see you and then there's going to be one that doesn't. There's always one person that doesn't like you and maybe it's more. And they're probably going to sell you out. So don't do that. If the person is going to be there the entire week and you've already gone detective mode on this, there's a way for you to have some casual interaction with him. I would have the interaction at the check-in be great. I'd have one more follow-up interaction. Hey, if you need anything, whatever. And then from that point on, I would not have the baseball in my hand. I wouldn't be walking around work with a baseball the whole time. But I would say to him, even if you mentioned that you talked to the son, he's already heard your spiel a million times. He's numb to it. He's going to sign the baseball for you. But just be a little cool on it from the work standpoint. And the cooler you are with him, the better he'll feel about the transaction. He's not going to want to sign a baseball when he checks in. Okay? Don't walk him up to his room unless you actually do that, which is probably he's going to probably figure that out. I'd say on the second interaction, be like, hey, look, I know this happens to you all the time. My father and I watched you, whatever game, I probably can guess what the game is. It would mean everything to me, even if you want to go heartstrings there and be like, you know, my father's not with us anymore. And I did actually talk to your son about this. So I hope I'm not, you know, I know it sucks, but it would mean everything for me. And he's, remember too, like guys that have been really successful, no one, I mean, granted, there's people that are just complete assholes their entire lives, but when you are very accomplished and somebody comes up to tell you how great you are, they usually don't hate that. Most people don't have a hard time with being told how awesome they are all the time. It can be repetitive and it can be annoying if done at the wrong time. But I haven't met too many people that are like, you know what I hate is when someone tells me how awesome I am. All right. So no check in. Don't follow them around. Maybe a more, you know, cool interaction there if he's there you're going to have multiple opportunities to pull this off so just play it cool in the beginning and then come right with it where you disarm it being like i know it sucks mean everything blah 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 blah, blah. sign it maybe i don't know if you say that hey i talked to your son and he said it would be cool I, that might actually be a mistake i don't know it depends i don't know how well you know the son so not much left on that i was just going to add can you you know obviously this guy's like a manager can you can you give him a basket of some sort can you hook Love him up it. with something like yeah. just just kind of smooth him a little bit. That that'll probably go a long way too. But you're right. If this guy's nice, like you're saying, right, it's probably not that big of a deal. A couple of monster energies and some Nabisco <laughs> peanut butter crackers. <laughs> <laughs> hey, they go a long way. Yeah, I, I just wouldn't linger. I'd get it out and be nice and and that's that's it. 
That's just it, right? I mean, he's he's in his he's in his home base for the week is the only thing I would say. Like, right? Your hotel's like your home base for a week. I would I would want him to feel like, you know, wouldn't want him to feel stared at the whole time. So yeah, I just wouldn't linger and just, you know, just put the effort into making it as as cool and laid back as you could be while still asking this man to sign something for you. Got a left field, no pun intended. So today's life advice was presented by Modelo. Modelo, brewed for those with a fighting spirit. 